In this problem, we are given an electric potential and our goal is to find the uh, electron density and then also the uh, total charge uh, that causes that uh, electric potential. And uh, one of the ways uh, that we can do, oh, by the way, uh, this is the electric potential where uh, A is just some function, so is lambda right here, so we have two R's hanging out here. Um, and one way that we could do it is uh, from the electric potential, of course, we can find uh, the electric field. From the electric field, we can eventually find the density of that electric field. That's because the electric field is equal to the negative gradient of the potential, right? And then if we can take the divergence of that electric field that we just saw for, then we're able to find the, oops, we're able to find the, uh, the density that causes that electric field, which causes that potential, which is what we have right here. And uh, it might be tempted, and, and one way that, that, you know, we can make some substitutions, right? So if, we, if we're given the uh, density, or the potential, we find the gradient, and then we find the divergence of that gradient, and so which I'll do some substitutions right here. If we find the divergence of the, uh, the negative gradient of the potential, which is just rewriting everything right here, um, and then we multiply all that by epsilon naught, here, we're going to find the, the density. And uh, to some of you, if you guys are kind of clever, you guys will notice that this is actually um, an identity for the doll operator. That's actually, this whole thing would actually be equal to the uh, negative Laplacian of the um, potential times you know, epsilon naught is equal to this. But that actually ends up being incorrect. Do not do that. The reason why is because because by doing that identity, you end up skipping past um, some of the steps. There's like a direct delta function that's hitting and hidden in there, and this will kind of lead you astray if you're not careful. So do not recommend doing this um, in this way. Uh, but first, we're going to do it doing this way. So let's start solving for the, um, the first part of the problem, which was the, the density that is caused by that potential. And that is equal to the, uh, let's see here, uh, epsilon naught times the divergence of the negative, oops, the negative gradient of that electric field, right? All right, do this here, straighten that out. All right, so we'll go ahead and start making the first substitution that we'll do is that we'll um, go ahead and do the substitution for the electric potential, which is the negative, and then remember the gradient, uh, for this case, since we only have everything in respect to R, and we're gonna use spherical coordinates, um, this is just gonna be a partial derivative. The gradient will just be the partial derivative in respect to R. So, um, like this, and here's our, um, our potential. And remember that the gradient uh, is produces a vector, so, we have, it pops out this uh, R hat right here, okay? So we'll go ahead and pull out some constants. We'll pull out that A right here. We'll leave this divergence right here. And then here's our negative sign. We'll start doing some um, derivatives because this is a derivative of um, two functions here multiplied by each other. We're gonna have to do the product rule. Sorry, a little distracted there. This ends up being a negative one for r squared. Okay, we'll go ahead and distribute this negative sign in. There we go. So that turns us, turns everything into uh, positives right there. Go ahead and condense everything down in this, in this next step. Divergence of, and then we'll pull out a negative lambda r, or e to the negative r. What's left is these guys here uh, in brackets r hat thanks to the gradient drop down our constants one more time all right so now we're going to do something that's uh that's kind of interesting uh um, whenever we take the divergence right here the divergence has a kind of a product rule i'm gonna go ahead and write it out right now in orange so if you have the divergence of um, a scalar 
field times a vector field, where this is the scalar field, this is some vector field. And we're free to define those however we want them here, but just the way that they landed, I'm just gonna define this as the uh, scalar field and, and this as the vector field. So I'm gonna tack this, um, this r hat onto this. Um, this identity ends up being, let's see here, u times the divergence of that vector field. Um, and then plus the, the vector field dotted with the gradient of that scalar field, right? So that's the identity that it comes from. And so that's exactly what's gonna happen here. Uh, let's see here, so we'll go ahead and apply that. <clears throat> so e to the negative lambda r is our u right here. So we're gonna take the divergence of our um, scalar field, or sorry, of our vector field. We'll just call it like this. Our hat, okay. And now we have our vector field here. This is our vector field dotted with the gradient of the scalar field, which was just the, that right there. Put it all in the proper brackets. Go ahead and drop down the, the constants here. All right, so I'll go ahead and distribute this um, divergence in del operator when dotted does distribute. So now we have two dot products in here. Dot product of, um, um, let's see here, r hat. And then over, oops, over r plus divergence lambda over r squared, r hat. Oh, sorry, there's no lambda right there. It's just That's just r hat. All right, there we go. And then uh, we'll go ahead and just take the uh, derivative, the gradient at the very end there. So that's all dotted with the, uh, the gradient of this right here, which ends up being, let's see here, um, negative lambda eight our hat pops out because that is the R component. Okay, um, things are getting kind of long here, but don't worry, they're going to um, condense down in a second. Uh, but before we do that, I wanna get your eyes right here. Remember, so this is really important, the divergence of the R hat over R squared. Uh, this whole thing right here is, that's the, that's the crux of these steps right here. That whole thing is equal to 4 pi times the Dirac delta. If you're unfamiliar with this, you can go back to look up the Dirac delta in uh, chapter one. Um, Dirac delta, super important thing to know. Um, it's pretty interesting reading about that. Um, but yeah, it's a really big important step of this problem is uh, the application of the Dirac delta function. So we'll, we'll keep chugging along now. Let's see here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do the um, the dot product. So this ends up being the um, um, the this is the gradient and just does the gradient of the R component here. Uh, if you're confused by that, you can look at the back cover of a Griffith's Griffith's textbook. Very helpful in figuring that out. And so now we have just the R component, which is one this one right here. Um, before I go on further, let me make sure I cancel these out. Excuse me. All right. And then losing my brackets here. So that's, excuse me real quick. This is all actually covered by a bracket here, inner bracket. And then nothing really changes that much here, except they just kind of get uh, multiplied by each other because they're both, um, uh, the negative component. Actually, let me go ahead and take out this negative here. Bring it to the front. Here we go. Pretty good so far. We're almost there, everybody. Our uh, constants drop down. Uh, we can go ahead and pull out 
this exponential from all terms, right? And now we'll clump together. Uh, we'll go ahead and apply this derivative right here. So this is just the derivative of um, r in respect to r, so which is just one, uh, and that ends up being, um, let's see here, lambda over r squared, and then plus r direct delta function. And let's see here, and then um, go ahead and do like a minus, we'll go ahead and pull out all the minuses from, yeah, distribute the minus here. So this is, and distribute that lambda in here as well. So this is lambda squared over r minus lambda over r squared. And here, here. And on the inside, you'll see that um, we have these two terms that conveniently cancel out right here. Drop down one more time. And now uh, let's go ahead and distribute this e exponential back in. So this is kind of important uh, to know as well. So we have um, so four pi Dirac delta times e to lambda r uh, minus, let's see here, lambda squared over r, so we get lambda r. All right, so this is a big one too, because remember, um, the direct delta function is a unique uh, function where it's zero everywhere except where um, the function, it's the the variable that the direct delta is a function is, so r, it's r, uh, direct, delta, direct delta here is equal to zero everywhere except where r equals zero where it spikes up to infinity, right? And another product of it is if you integrate all of this right here, this space under this infinity spike, uh, it all ends up being equal to one. So it's like kind of an infinite, like arbitrarily infinitely small distance and infinitely high where the entire area is actually just one, right? So that means if the, if the Dirac delta function is zero everywhere except for r equals zero, then any function multiplied by the Dirac delta function is zero everywhere except for r equals zero. So that means um, this whole function here is zero everywhere except for r equals zero, then it has some value, right? Well, then r equals zero of this exponential is just one. So this exponential can go away. Again, if you're confused on that, highly recommend you go back to chapter one, uh, do some research on the Dirac delta function because it's a very interesting and useful function. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we end up having is uh, four pi times the Dirac delta function minus lambda squared over r e to the negative lambda r. That is r in case you forgot already. That's our, um, our density.